Good morning everyone, esteemed dignitaries, professors, fellow students. We appreciate your patience and thank you all for joining us today. All human beings depend on the environment in which we live in. A safe, clean, healthy and sustainable environment is all what we are looking for. Right to life, health, food and sanitization. Isn't there a saying, three meals a day a roof is very pleasant. Now protecting human rights is also declining recently and there is also a recognition between the link of human rights and environment. The human rights and the environment mandate created in March 2012 and which has been extended in 2018 tries to examine the human rights obligated towards providing a safe, clean and sustainable environment. We have with us today our guest speaker, Sairam Bhatt, Dr. Sairam Bhatt, a professor of law and Gayatri Ma'am, a professor of law who will be speaking today for us. I now humbly call upon our Dean, Dr. Tia Subramanya, to welcome our guest. I deem it a great privilege to welcome Dr. Sai Rambat. Dr. Sai Rambat is a well-known uh, teacher all through the state of Karnataka as well as outside. I still remember when I, when I was in NUJS, he had visited there two, three times and the students applauded his lectures. You now he has been working in Sira and over the years he has become a master in the area of environmental law. And he is, and he has been visiting us at least twice in a year and will be delivering two or three lectures. And it is of immense help to the students' community uh, on the whole. We have another person by name, Madam Gayatri, not our teacher, another one. <laughs> so, on behalf of the CMR Group of Institutions, Madam, I welcome you too. And I request Madam Gayatri to present the bouquet of flowers to our esteemed uh, A warm welcome to all the teachers as well as the students. Please listen and learn. Environment is a growing subject. And it is growing Remember, I can just make a reference to that more than any other subject uh, in the field of law. Every day dimensions are changing, new discoveries are coming up, new uh, analogies and illustrations are being given. So as students of law, you should know and you should must, must cultivate the right to protect our own environment. Thank you. Now I call upon Maria Tatl, third year BBLLP, to introduce to us about our guest. Thank you, Joel. Good morning, everyone. We have with us today Dr. Sairam Bhatt, a professor of law and coordinator for the Environmental Law Education, Research and Advocacy at the National Law School of India University, Bangalore. Dr. Bhatt was awarded his bachelor's degree in law from JSS Law College, Mysore, in 1997. Further, he completed his master's degree in law and was also awarded his doctorate by the University of Mysore in 2006. He has served as the editor of law for Kare Law Journal and has also co-authored the Environmental Law Handbook for Law Practitioners at Sira NLSIU. He has also been the editor for Sage Journals India and also for the law relating to business contracts in India and has authored the Natural Resources Conservation Law published by SAGE India in 2010, and also the right to information that had been published by the Eastern Book House, Gauhati, in 2012. Dr. Bhatt had received the Young India Environmental Law Fellowship in 2003, and he has served as an adjunct faculty at the Golden Gate University, San Francisco, USA. 
He has also been the visiting researcher at Georgetown University Law Center and also a Linnaeus Farm Academic Exchange Fellow at the Royal Institute of Technology, Stockholm, Sweden. He is also the receiver of the Fulbright Fellowship and today he is here to speak on human rights and the environment. We are indeed honored to have you with us, sir. Well, welcome you all. Respected uh, Professor Subramaniam, uh, Gayatri of CMR, <laughs> Gayatri of NLS, uh, faculty at uh, the CMR Law School, uh, senior students who have met in the past, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's always a great uh, uh, you know, privilege to be part of the activities at CMR Law School. And uh, environment is a subject that I teach and practice. And, um, uh, with the discussion with uh, Professor Gayatri of CMR, uh, we were to narrow down on a topic and also to narrow down on a group of students. So I think uh, Gayatri ma'am said human rights to environment would be the apt topic for all of you and here we are. Friends, um, I have no intention to give a lecture. I don't like giving a lecture to be honest. I like interacting with you. I like uh, sharing some stories with you. I hope that's okay. Or do you prefer a lecture? I'm more than happy because I've been trained to be a lecturer. Anyway, so I think stories would do well, isn't it? Okay. So I will share only three stories with you. After that, we'll go in for a round of interaction. Is that okay? Three good stories. I can guarantee you that you'll never forget these stories. Okay, how many of you like Salman Khan? Only two of you? Three? Okay, you are all fans of Patan. Not Salman Khan. Tiger Abhi Zinda. Huh? You don't like Salman Khan? Are you serious? I love Salman Khan. Because in my college days, the first Mene Pyar Kiya, Usne Kiya, Mene Ne. Right, so, Mera Pyaar Ka Seen Wohi Tha. Okay. So, friends, someone um, did mention about black bug. I just heard it, overheard it. How many of you have uh, heard about Salman Khan's uh, interaction with law? When I say interaction, you know, Salman Khan happens to have many interactions with law. Yeah, driving accident. Yeah, he killed a few people uh, who were sleeping on the pedestrian or the pavement. What, did he kill that? Okay, excellent. Then, what happened to that case? Salman Khan went to jail. And then, he came on Big Boss. <laughs> huh? So, what happened to that case? Any idea? Okay, let's not talk about driving because my topic is not motor vehicles law. I'll come on some other day and discuss that case. But my subject is environment today, right? So if those of you who don't know this case, this case is about my generation, okay? So Salman Khan was making a movie, Hum Saath Saath Hai. Beautiful. Koi jagda nahi hota hai. Sab log saath saath rete hai. Toh mere generation mein saath saath rete the. Aapke generation mein sab separate rete hai. Okay. So this film was being shot in Rajasthan. Wait, yaar. I am starting the story or ending it. Okay. So this film was being shot. Do you know the actors in this film? Let me test your general knowledge. Anyone has asked in CLAT? No. If I was asked to design the question paper, I would have asked you. Haan, tell me who were the actors in Ham Saath Saath Hai? Saif Ali Khan. Good man. You should have joined the Film Institute of India, not the Law Institute of India. That's good. Cool. I like that. Right. Tell me the ladies. Kapoor was there. Yes. Huh? Karishma Kapoor was there. 
Sonali Bendre was there. Wow! Look at your knowledge, guys. Wow, wow. And that too, a historical film. Huh? Anyway, it was a hit film, so you should know about it. Okay? So, these guys were camping in Rajasthan and they were naturally shooting this film. And uh, unfortunately, a news comes that uh, Black Buck has been killed. And uh, naturally, there is a local community called the Beshnovi community. Uh, they find this animal to be a sacred animal. Please note. They don't allow hunting of a black buck in that particular area. So they are concerned, saying that kisi ne ek sacred animal hamare customary. You know, see, please note in India, such a diverse nation that in many places we actually pray rivers. Right? Why do you call a river Kaveri, Ganga, Yamuna? Because we say that culturally, historically, spiritually, we give value to these resources in nature. Correct? Similarly, I think there are a lot of animals that are respected. In many states you will notice. Okay, so what is the national animal of India? Tiger. Tiger. What is the national bird of India? Now, what is the national flower of India? Wow. I never got so many answers. But good, you know about it, right? So what does this symbol of nationalism do? It gives special privilege status for protection, conservation. You don't want these to be hunted for many reasons, right? The hunting is stopped because maybe some of these are near extinct. They're endangered. They need protection, right? So I think the black bug is also a nationally uh, important animal, but for the community it was a sacred animal. They didn't want people to, you know, hunt these animals. Anyway, hunting a black bug is prohibited by the Wildlife Protection Act. So now there is a news that two black bugs have been killed. <coughs> okay, the Vaishnavi community says, who has killed this animal? They say this people who are camping in this forest area, the film unit of Ham Saat Saat Hai, might have killed the animal. So I think the blame is on them. Okay, so this is the story, right? Okay, now how many of you think Salman Khan killed those two black bugs? Please raise your hands. Okay, how many of you think they died on their own, suicide? <laughs> no, two black bugs were killed. You are saying, you know, only two people raised their hand. So who killed those two black bugs? Some lightning struck and the black bugs died. No? Somebody did black magic and the black bug died. Huh? The tiger came and killed the black bug. Now what are your theories? Tell me, you know. Two black bugs are dead. So who killed them? Salman Khan. Okay, now you're... Okay. Because Salman Khan is the main hero of the film? Okay, so it could be Saif Ali Khan as well. Maybe. Or the women are innocent, always. They don't kill. They only kill by their looks. Okay, so what happened is, friends, a case was registered against everyone, including the director, including Sonali Bendre, including Sarif Ali Khan, because they were all there in the same place. See, the local people will not hunt. Who will hunt? You know, they are the natural you know, culprits of such a scene. So a case was registered. Unfortunately, you know, you know somewhere uh, Salman Khan is the main hero. Uh, he is the most popular star. The case ran against him. And he went to jail uh, three times. And then came on bail also three times. Okay. Yeah, so interesting uh, case, isn't it? Now, the question is, friends, when you talk about a case of, say, a wildlife poaching or wildlife hunting, right? It is a crime in India to do these activities because animals also have rights. They have the right to survive. They have the right to stay in a habitat, like a natural park, like a sanctuary. So killing is some kind of a prohibited activity. You can kill a few other animals, but you cannot kill wild animals. Isn't that the law? Right? So what I'm just trying to speak about is the aspects of animal rights. Okay. Now, okay, so finally what happened to Salman Khan in this case? 
he was held guilty? No. Why not? Who said this? So has been Salman Khan punished for uh, killing the black buck? Finally, what happened in this case? You don't want to know as students of law? So how many heroes will you follow in law apart from Sai Ram Bhatt? Oh no, how many heroes do you have in India to follow? Don't follow Justice Chandrachur. He is the right guy. Following right guys, you will never learn the law. Follow the wrong guys. You will defend your clients well. Sanjay Dutt, yes. Good guy. Yeah. Hukka ke liye nahi. Drugs ke liye nahi. Okay. So, you know, Salman's Khan case is a very interesting one. You should actually see it because, remember friends, while many of us may believe that Salman Khan is guilty of killing the black bug, it all depends upon how a court trial takes place, how evidence is gathered, how investigation is done. These are very important factors. Making an allegation is easy in India. Proving it is the most difficult task and that is where the role of the lawyers come into place. Right? You can create sensation out of any news, to be honest, in India. It doesn't take much time, thanks to social media and Arnab Goswami. It doesn't take much time. But to bring in the proof that is required in a court of law, right? that's the real challenge. And that is where I think we need good environmental law practitioners. In India, unfortunately, environmental <coughs> law is not a preferred profession. Most of you would want to go to corporate law. But let me give you an assurance that in environmental law, in which area me and NLS Gayatri is involved. <laughs> so we have enough work, we have enough business. There are a number of cases that are increasing on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So you will notice that this is an area that you can have a choice on, but you should know what to pursue and how to pursue it. Got it? Okay. Uh, Salman Khan case, shall we shut it there? Yes. <coughs> or do you want to know a little bit more? Dil mange more? Yes, sir. Okay. Dimaak mange more. Dil ke baare mein nahi baat karte. That is in before the Supreme Court of India 377. Anyway, the point is... <laughs> late realization, tube light. <laughs> but I'm glad one of you at least caught the joke very quickly. So, in Salman Khan's case, friends, please note the lower court found him guilty but did not find Sonali Bendre and Saif Ali Khan guilty. You know why? Because the entire case was based on one sole eyewitness. So as you go progress in law, you will understand what a witness or a sole witness can do. This guy's name is very important for me. I am not bothered about Salman Khan. I just told you Salman Khan because you guys know him. For me, the witness is very important. His name is Harish Dulani. Okay. He was the one who goes to the local Bishnavi community and says, Salman Khan ne black buck ko mara hai. And they go to the police and they register a case. Okay. But the Bishnavi community never asked Harish Dulani, give me the details. Right? Naturally, the police asked Harish Dulani. So Harish Dulani says in his police statement, saying, sir, Salman Khan was driving the gypsy jeep. During those days, gypsy jeep. You might have seen in some garage right now. So Gypsy Jeep was there, so he was driving, so I have seen him and I have seen blood stains in the Gypsy. So Salman Khan is killed. So he confirmed it and the police registered a case. But then, when uh, the case comes to the court, Harish Dulani is called. Okay, So you know how witness is examined. I don't know if you know this. So witness is asked to say, what did you say, what did you see? So Harish Dulani said, sir, the same thing. I saw Salman Khan driving the Gypsy and the gypsy had blood stains and naturally Salman Khan killed the two black men. Now look, the lawyer of Salman Khan, that is where you can really make money. Yes or no? Yes. If you defend Salman Khan and show that he is... That is where you get more money. So the lawyer of Salman Khan asked Harish Dulani, Harish Dulani tell me something. How many people while driving a car can kill a black book? How many people driving a car kill a black buck? Only RRR can do it. <laughs> you see, on RRR he goes on the shoulder. <laughs> they can film. 
Oh, except that film, there is no other film that can verify this authenticity of doing two things at the same time. Interestingly, when was the black bird killed? Harish Dolani was asked. He says in the night. In the night. So the lawyer of Salman Khan says, how many people can through a naked eye sight a black bug and then shoot it also? Oh yeah. Okay, do you know the color of the black bug? It's black. Black and green. So Ratko Dikaideta? Ratko Dikaideta? Unless you have some special American forces night vision glasses. Which someone can, can definitely have. Night vision glasses, right? You can sight people. In the court, Harish Dolani started uh, sweating like I am sweating right now. He said, Yaar, right questions. So <laughs> yeah. Then he changed his statement. He says, I doubt whether Salman Khan was driving the car. Maybe Salman Khan was sitting on the top and watching for the black bug to come and then shoot. Okay. The case does not stop here. The case goes on. Okay. So they ask Harish Dulani, Harish Dulani, two black bug or three black bug? Confirm se bata sakte ho? Sir, uh, mero lagta hai do. Teen kyun nahi ho sakta? Nahi, mero ko lagta hai do hi. So interestingly, the point that the lawyers of Salman Khan said is, please produce the body of those two black bugs. Body samjha rahe no? Not human body, animal body. Corpus. Or carrots, as we call it. Not available. Interestingly, there were blood stains in the gypsy. This was confirmed. But that blood stains were human blood stains or animal blood stains? You know Salman Khan, he can be wild at night. Afna khud ka aisa kya ho na? Ho sakta hai na? So verify karna zaruri ek nahi So please note friends, in India when you say sir, there are so many poor rate of conviction of criminals. Why are criminals not being convicted in law? I am sure you know your teachers in the next classes will tell you, India has so many laws but you know lot of criminals are going scot-free. Why? It is because of shoddy investigation and shoddy prosecution. Please note, for many of us, Salman Khan may be guilty, but in law, Salman Khan is not guilty. For the simple reason is, there is a requirement in criminal law which we say, proof beyond doubt. Right? We say, in criminal law, 10 guilty people can go scot-free, but one innocent should not be punished. Right? So, Salman Khan's case lied on just one sole witness who could not credibly stand to his statement, right? And finally, the most interesting part, if you Google it, you will try to probably find it out. What weapon was used to kill the black bug? What weapon was used to kill the black bug? Rifle, what kind of rifle? Rifles has many parts. Anybody who has details of rifles? 303, 202, Single barrel, double barrel, or oh, none of you have experience. None of you are from Uttar Pradesh or Bihar. You are all from South India, that's why the look of your face shows me that you have never touched or seen a gun of any sort. If you come from, anyway, no, with all due respect to UP is changing, thanks to Yogi. So the point is friends, please note it was an air gun. Okay, so if some of you know what an air gun is, in air gun, you can only maximum injure a black bug, you can never kill a black bug, unless it is at point black range. Okay, so finally friends, based on the evidence, Salman Khan was acquitted in one of the cases, out of the three cases. What does this show is that friends, cases like this are quite interesting and challenging to read. You should read them so that you can learn the law very well. Because you may be on this side of the law or you may be on that side of the law. But they are something that you can actually study, practice and see forward to have a career in law. Right? Okay. Let me close Salman Khan go to my second story. Is that okay? okay. How many of you are animal lovers? Oh my God. 
Over well me. Okay. How many of you are uh, human being lovers? <laughs> oh, she raised her hand. Which kind of human being do you love? No, let's not say anything. Okay, as animal lovers, how many of you would like to feed dogs? Oh my god. No long, no wonder CMR ke bar itne kutte. Abhi dekhe hai. Haan, log kam mein kutte jada. So friends, Okay, okay, relax. Take a deep breath. It's okay. It happens. Yeah, so we have many dark lovers in India as well. Right? Um, so I had a client in a Bangalore apartment who had this practice of feeding dogs every day in the morning. So he would take Parleji biscuit. I asked him specifically which biscuit, okay? He said Parleji. You know why? Cheapest. <laughs> I said, Kyuna, good day. If you're an animal lover, good day, Janaji. Huh? Kaju, kuch hai. Huh? Expensive. That's all. Nee, but Parliji. But still animal lover. Anyway, the point is every day in the morning he would go for his walk. And outside the apartment, on the gate, he would feed the dogs. Right? The apartment association started having a problem with him. They said, please don't feed dogs because it's creating. Uh, nuisance and early in the morning kids are going to school the van is coming there is a lot of people going there and the street dogs suddenly uh, you know become violent and say you can't feed the dogs we are passing a resolution in the apartment that anyone who feeds the dog uh, will be imposed with a fine of thousand rupees so he called me because he knew that I was a non-animal lover. So he said, yeah. So, no. He said, no, this is a problem. Please give me some advice. What do you think? What should be done in this case? Many animal lovers in the house. What should be done? He can take them to the corner. <laughs> And the dogs will listen. Now you eat it only here. I like that. It's a very practical idea. Okay. Next. Change the timing. Come at 12 o'clock in the night when everybody's sleeping and then feed the dogs. Beautiful idea. I love this suggestion. You're all very smart. Next, please. Can take a shelter house. You, he can take all the dogs to the shelter house and then adopt all the dogs in his own name and give a monthly maintenance to that. Very good point. Very good. I really like him. He's, he has a lot of money, I suppose. Huh. Good, but I like that. Appreciate it. And you know, probably I will tell uh, NLS Bangalore to approach you because in my campus there are at least 40 such dogs. <laughs> Yeah, anyone else? Back row, any idea, suggestions? Animal lovers who raised your hand in the last row. Guys, what is your idea? You are the real LLBs, no? Lord of the last bench. Oh my god, what a PJ. Huh, bolo. Anybody else? No other idea? Okay, then guys, I don't think you are thinking like a lawyer. You are all probably just in your formative years, that's fine. But what should a lawyer do? Is this a legal problem or is this a social problem? Social. You think it's a social problem, for me it's a legal problem. Friends, please note, when a client comes to you, he may come with some kind of a problem situation and you may just want to treat it as social. But if you treat it as social problem, you don't get any business. You can't charge your client fees. You have to do some counseling session. Sir, hota hai. Ek kaam karo. Aap apartment change karo na. Hota hai. Ek kaam karo. Sir, aap independent house le lo. Yeah, do one thing. You go to a state which is more pet loving or animal loving. You change the country. Simple. What is wrong about it? 
चिल सर डोंट वरी ये छोटे छोटे देश में बड़ी बड़ी प्रॉब्लम्स होती रहती है फ्रेंड्स देर इज अ लॉ कॉल्ड प्रिवेंशन ऑफ क्रुएल्टी टू एनिमल्स एक्ट ओके आई डोंट थिंक आई शुड से दिस एंड देर इज अ नोटिफिकेशन विच से इज that you cannot be harassed in case you are feeding dogs it's an offense if someone is stopped from feeding a dog there is a notification of 2009 feeding a dog is part of your duty and a right it is respecting animals and animal rights of course by feeding these dogs you cannot cause public nuisance but you cannot be stopped from feeding a dog This was a notification that was issued in 2009 under this act called the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act, and no apartment can pass such a resolution because he was not feeding the dog within the apartment premises; he was feeding the dog outside the apartment premises, and the apartment association has no jurisdiction regarding the same. So I told my client, show this notification, and then give my fees. <laughs> so friends let me tell you animal rights in india are also critical and important as we balance human rights do you agree human rights to environment is important but is animal rights also important should animals coexist with us do they have equal rights should we respect those equal rights okay so i think it's important that today when we talk about human rights just let's not focus on human beings our respect to animals is also critical if you read the constitution of india friends please know in the constitution there is a fundamental duty of citizens under article 51 ag there is a fundamental duty of citizens to respect nature and to show compassion to animals it's a constitutional fundamental duty right of course we should avoid public nuisance we should avoid uh, you know any kind of uh, issues that may cause uh, endanger to public safety i agree with all that but animals have to coexist with us this is a planet that even they have rights on it's not only our rights okay so how many of you have seen animal cruelty can you tell me a few instances of animal cruelty i have seen it on instagram videos right not, uh, no problem what did you see uh, them beating dogs beating dogs and okay excellent okay and you feel that that's good or bad it's bad only why How do you tame an animal? How do you tame an animal? No, I'm just asking. Okay, sit down, sit down. Yeah. So I have seen in the real life. So when I was walking the street, one of the pet dog itself, he, uh, the lady who was uh, like taking him, like hit very badly. Like it was not a gentle hit or what you said how to tame a dog, but it was a very harsh and cruel way of hitting. मारो यस सर जब वो काटने आए एक मिनट एक धीरे से काटने ओके हम भी फ्यू गॉन ऑन अ घोड़ा गाड़ी और हॉर्स काट राइड या इफ यू गो टू माइसोर यू कैन एक्चुअली फाइंड सम ऑफ दीज इवन नाउ इफ यू आर नॉर्थ इंडियन इफ यू हैव योर भारत यू कैन डू इट ऑन द घोड़ा गाड़ी सो हैव यू गॉट टू हॉर्स रेस Does the jockey whip the horse yes. to win the race? Is that cruelty? So I'm just asking. Hitting is prohibited. The magnitude of hitting it. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're talking of your personal case at home, or? Huh? Really? Just for clarification. I'm just concerned because you get hit by your parents also. No? Magnitude is important. Get your mark now. Okay. So friends, have you heard about something called the Jalli Kattu case? Yeah. What 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 do you know about this case? Yes. Wonderful. Good. So you know, zindagi na milegi dubara. Someone went to Spain unnecessarily. He could have gone to Tamil Nadu. Same job. बट नहीं हमको स्पेन देखना है वहां का बुल रेस देखना है टोमेटो फेस्टिवल देखना है 
Asha, so what did the Supreme Court say in the Jalikatu case? Why were they concerned about this kind of a bull race? What was the major issue in that case? M. Nagaraja versus Union of India. It's a very interesting case. Have you heard about an organization called PETA? Yes. People's. What is that? PETA means? You have heard of it, but you don't know the expansion. Ethical treatment of animals. Right? So you have organizations that work for animal rights. So what was the real issue in Jalikatu? Anyone from Tamil Nadu? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> you still want to raise. Go ahead. After this class, they will all attack you, but it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Some. Uh. That's it. Very good. Excellent. Very good. At least uh, that's some kind of information. Yeah, you never clapped for me, but you're clapping for your own person. <laughs> Self praise or <over. laughs> Guys, in Jalli Kattu, there was an allegation. The allegation was these bulls that were taking part were actually fed with certain kinds of feed which should actually enrage them. The food is actually spiked. Please note that. That's the first allegation that was made by people who are working for animal rights. So, will you get enraged if you have some kind of spiked food? Of course, right? So, you'll start probably behaving abnormally. When you go to pub in the night, that's what you do. So, <laughs> second, please note, there was another allegation saying, at the very last minute before the bulls are released, the tail would be cut with a scissor. Now the tail of an animal is a very sensitive part. You don't have one. I'm talking of animals. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So aapka nas jab karte hai na ta chupta ki nahi So waisa hi the tail would be cut, and that then brings the bull to an enraged mode. Of course, you are absolutely right. In some cases, chili powder and other spices were being used, and uh, that's how the bulls will start. You know, coming and then the competition comes. So that is something that should be stopped because that is animal cruelty. The Supreme Court agreed. They said, yes, this is animal cruelty. It's important, right? Any such unethical practices, immoral practices, illegal practices, we as human beings don't have the right over these animals, right? You it may be your passion, it may be your culture uh, to have a, a kind of a bull race. Do it. But please don't you know, get into these kinds of practices. It's not right. right? So, interestingly, you will notice, friends, while bulls in uh, Jallikattu were given feed to get enraged, animals in circuses were fed something else to keep them calmer. Did you know this? Not now. Before a law came called the Ban on Performing Animals in Circuses Regulation. Today, if you go to a circus, you will not see many of these animals. But when they were there, like lion and tiger and all these were there in the Russian circuses, these animals were fed something very serious. Uh, it is a substance that is used to actually calm them down because then, you know, they will not be aggressive on stage. So I'm telling you the reverse of what can happen with feeding of animals. So I think animal rights becomes very critical. Right? I think we have to understand that. While we say we have rights as human beings, please note, before you can speak about your rights, speak about your duties. And you have a duty towards these animals. Do you agree? Yes, okay. Now let me come to my last story and after that we can open up for some interaction. Again friends, this is a very interesting story on uh, um, you know, what we call as the human right to environment. Friends, the Supreme Court has several occasions has said that there is a fundamental right to environment. Okay? What does this right to environment mean? Do you know that in India we have a fundamental right to sleep? Yes. I was just about to ask her because she was like, 
Yeah. Do you have a fundamental right to sleep? Yes, sir. With judgment? Ram Leela Maidan. Okay. Do you exercise that right in a classroom? No. Then this is when? In Ram Leela Maidan you can sleep. Freedom Park you can sleep. Huh? You have a duty to sleep. No, no. You have a right to disturb others. Sorry? Not to sleep. Not to dis when while they are sleeping. Okay, so teachers please note it down. When the student is sleeping, you have a duty not to disturb. <laughs> please make me understand what this is. From my law point of view, I need to know. So friends, you know what happened? You will notice that we have something called right to religion. Do we have right to religion as a fundamental right of people? Now what happens with right to religion, friends? Religion is a very uh, you know, interesting concept in India. If you talk about religion, it's bad. If you don't talk also, it is bad. But religion has this very interesting way of uh, you know, celebrating religion. So how do you celebrate religion in India? None of us can do it silently. We have to generate a lot of noise. Right? So if you go to Bombay during Ganesh festival, Ganesh will be sitting here, but Govinda and Salman Khan will be dancing next to Ganesh. If you go to Gujarat, they have nine days one festival. And the Dandya will only start after 10 p.m. in the name of some Bhagwan. Then there are loudspeakers that are used during, during prayers. Lot of loudspeakers are called. They say this is the loudspeaker. We want everyone to come at this time for prayers. That's why we are using loudspeakers. So there was a very interesting case in um, Tamil Nadu where a religious institution had this very interesting practice. In the morning, early morning, Right, there is in Hindu law also we say there is something called Brahma Murtam. Do you know what time that is? When you get deep sleep. Okay, you are giving me more details. Glad. So this was not from the Hindu religion. Anyway, the point is in the morning they had this practice of taking out a procession in the local vicinity. Sabko jagana, jagte raho, jagte raho, Bhagwan ka naam lete raho. So they would go around the procession and they would use some musical instruments. Early in the morning, every day. Then they will come back to the uh, place, they will assemble, they will pray the Lord, and then they will disperse by 6.30 a.m. The local residents over there, they complained. They said, this is, this is becoming a nuisance. Uh, and we have uh, a fundamental right to sleep, thanks to the Ram Leela judgment. So friends, interestingly, when we say right to environment, can this right be an absolute right? The answer is no. No right is absolute. Right? You need to see whether right to religion can be absolute. When you have right to religion, can you use loudspeakers? Is it part of your right to religion? Can you beat drums? Can you blow trumpets? Can you create noise while exercising right to religion? Should you be allowed to do that? Right? Can you use amplifiers, speakers as a matter of right to religion? Should you be allowed to do that? So you will notice friends that there has to be a balancing of rights and sometime you will notice that right to environment will overtake right to religion. Especially when religion creates nuisance, when religion generates noise, when religion disturbs the peace in a community, then environment or peaceful environment will take a priority. Right? So to be honest there are many such facets in environment which uh, you know, come into constitutional law, which come into human rights law, which come into international law, and which can come into domestic law as well, right? So all of these make this subject a very interesting one, uh, not only to study, but to also to practice. And, uh, uh, you know, my effort today was to just create your interest in this subject. Uh, we should open up if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah.
Hi sir. <clears throat> so my question is about uh, carbon gas production. Carbon gas. So Canada has the highest number of carbon uh, gas production, and also there's some uh, environment organization where they say that where they claim that uh, the amount of production of carbon gas should be reduced all over the world. So particularly by reducing this carbon gas, it's going to affect mainly on a developing country like India. So like, uh, what's your take on, uh, take over on it? Take on it. He has asked an out of syllabus question. <laughs> I can talk about natural gas. <laughs> but you spoke about carbon gas, that's a... Okay. So, on the serious part, I think uh, India has its own challenges. Uh, as a developing economy and uh, an economy that is fighting poverty, energy security for everyone. We have our own challenges. So to agree to many of these global pacts, for example, very recently we came up with what is known as the methane pact. Uh, India did not agree to the same because 60% of the population is still agriculturally dependent. Energy in India, now you said carbon, right? It's a very important process. Uh, energy in India is still uh, quite inadequate. We are still struggling with rural electrification as well though we have invested in renewables. So to be honest, anything uh, that the West comes up as a prescription is not very easy for India to accept. However, does India have its own role to play in the global uh, fight against uh, climate change uh, to reducing its uh, carbon emission and contribution? I think we do have. I think it's part of our ecosystem, it's part of our culture to say that, look, even before you prescribe, we will do what we can on our own. And I think that is where the Prime Minister has uh, uh, made a very important announcement. One, that we will go carbon neutral not by 2050, but by 2070. Two, he has also said that one third of our land area will be covered by wilderness. I'm not saying only forest, wilderness. This is important because forest and these wilderness areas will be carbon sinks in India. So I think we are setting our own targets while the global concern is always there. Uh, I think that is where India is progressing too. So I think it's not that we are neglecting those uh, issues and challenges, but we are fixing those achievable targets that India with its current GDP, job rate and so on and so forth can contribute to the same. So I think that is where the balancing of interest has happened in this country. Yeah, please. Good morning, sir. So, recently, India is finding new materials, new natural resources. Like in Kashmir, we found lithium. In Andhra Pradesh, we found non-earth metals. So, that will require a lot of digging, a lot of uh, environmental issues will arise. So, how should India balance development as well as environmental issues? Actually, you asked a very political question during elections in Karnataka. <laughs> there is nothing legal about what you asked. Uh, but yes, uh, so you know, there is no easy answers to this. Okay, the concept is sustainable development, uh, good on paper but difficult to practice. The reality is that we need lithium for EVs. We need these rare metals that are found in Andhra Pradesh to propel our economy. So these are inevitable. We are going to extract them because these are resources. Resources are for utilization. There is an inevitable task to it, including forest, timber, even animals for that matter. They are considered resources, right? Now, the point is, see, uh, at one point of time, you will always say that, let us keep these minerals for the future generation. Let's not use it for the current generation. Will that be a choice that uh, political uh, leaders can make? It's not going to be easy, right? So I think uh, every problem in nature is a challenge to come up with a new solution. I think we will come up with those kinds of solutions. So these resources will have to be tapped. As and when there is a new challenge, I think we will come up with a better solution. And technology, research and development is all about that. However, uh, see, if you compare to China, which is the nearest neighbor, India has not tapped all its mineral resources yet, though we have such a, a huge population. So I think somewhere we have done good, 
in uh, balancing nature as well as environment uh, despite the population pressure despite the growth uh, prediction pressure so india is still doing pretty well and i think that is one advantage that is where we have to uh, take a lot of questioning in however <coughs> minerals are for extraction minerals have to be tapped be it coal be it rare metal be it uranium be it thorium which is required for nuclear energy because right now our nuclear energy is just 3% of our energy demands and the target is to increase it to 9% so we will tap minerals for that so i think those are inevitable tasks you have to continue uh, doing the same you have to tap you have to explore them however how can you do that with least impact on the environment is where the government policy should start yes please good morning sir so uh, as you spoke about the case of the dog like the man was feeding the dog and then you spoke about the case of right to peaceful environment and the right to religion where right to peaceful environment prevailed over right to religion so when the man is feeding the dogs the people around they also have a right to peaceful environment right to free movement so because of his act the other people rights are getting restricted um regardless of the fact that you defending your client how would you like to respond i think uh, you know it's about balancing of interest right so do dogs or do street dogs have the right to get food and should they be fed we are saying yes that's how we are treating uh, things see in india uh, we have some very historical challenges now how many people have you found cattle on the street do you see cattle abandoned cattle on the street where are they coming from <coughs> who should take care of them whose duty is to keep your streets clean safe the municipality there is some organization there is an urban government local government they have to take that responsibility if they do not you cannot allow these dogs to die that could become another sanitation and a health concern point 1 point 2 is when this notification of 2009 was brought in it was brought in to protect those animal lovers who are feeding these abandoned animals it was with that purpose right so there is a purpose behind that law however yes of course we have to balance safety as i said if it is going to be a safety concern i think we have to make it a stop and that's why you will notice there are organizations uh, from the jain community that have established what is known as pinjarapur or what is known as the animal rescue center so you can actually take these animals to those rescue centers and they are being catered and taken care of there of course that's something that we have to exercise the choice of so i think uh, we have to look from both the premises it's like one uh, coin but it has two sides to it so we need to balance the same you cannot say these dogs cannot and should never be fed there cannot be a law for that that would be a completely uh you know uh, uncompassionate state and uncompassionate uh, set of people right i'm sure when you go across the street uh suppose there is a uh, someone who is uh, lying on the street uh asking for some food sometimes you will feel like giving food to that person is it that human being if suppose it's a dog why not it's just that i think it's just being compassionate towards uh, these people who are in need beat animals or otherwise that's the rule over there however you are absolutely right in case it is going to endanger public way it is going to endanger public safety i think there has to be some regulation regarding the same that is something for the municipality to do that welcome yes please uh, hello sir good morning Uh, my question is with uh, with respect to this fashion technology which has been emerged since 90s till 20 like it's it's going on right so the fashion which was used in 90s may be may not be repeated in today's world or the uh, like the fashion which is used today may or may not be uh, like used in the upcoming 10 years so they has been producing a lots and lots of clothes uh, with respect to day to day basis so is there any legal perspective what we can do with respect to the fashion technology do we do can we set up a legal organization with respect to that like in a way or other it's causing a uh, degradation to the environment by leaking of the plastics and dumping so many clothes into the waters right so how do you deal with this no to deal with that we already have enough legislation what we need is awareness of the consumer see in india There is no dearth of any legislation to ban uh, dyes 
in manufacturing of clothes. Uh, we have already uh, regulated the leather industries, the tanneries from polluting the water. Uh, we have brought in a lot of change in terms of uh, looking at eco-labeling of goods, saying that these are green, these are not, so on and so forth. But the point is, till there is a market demand, there will be suppliers. It's just that, either legal or through the legal means. So what is more required is, I think Indians should be green consumers. Don't buy, don't create the demand. I'm sure the supplies will dry out on their own. But we still, uh, you know, go for materials uh, like plastic or something like that, right? So I think that is where we have to be very conscious about not creating that market. Because if there is a market, either it be the legal way or the illegal way, goods will come into uh, the nation. So I think it's important, like as consumers, we become green consumers. That's the easiest solution for everything. Secondly, I think you will notice that uh, a lot has changed. A lot has changed. Today, if you are buying an air conditioner, please note there is something called the five star rating. Have you seen that? What is that? It's not your Google review rating. It's not your Zomato rating. What is that five star rating? Who gives that five star rating? There is something called the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. They test these electronic gadgets. And the electronic gadget that uses the least amount of electricity is given the five star rating. Then there is four star, three star, no star at all. What should you buy? Five star. Five. Yeah, so how will you contribute better to the environment? So I think law is there. I think there are agencies that are doing the job. It's just that the consumers in India have to stop their chalta hai attitude and you know be more proactive in making green choices. I think that's very important. Uh, as we see, for example, when you order on Zomato, you know, just see what um, you know you need to order and what you need to not to order. The basics, right? Because the packaging that comes with Zomato is all waste, right? So again, uh, uh, we have to be conscious. I think that is what everyone should contribute to: environmentally being benign and environmental consciousness will go a long way. Thank you for that wonderful speech, sir. Rather than giving a lecture, you gave, came forward and you gave a very wonderful speech. And thank you everyone over here for listening and asking wonderful questions. Now I call upon Nihad from third year to give a vote of thanks. Uh, well, good morning again. So I deem it to be a privilege to deliver this vote of thanks on such an enlightening session uh, we had on human rights and the environment. On behalf of the Center for Environment Studies, Law and Policy, I wholeheartedly thank our guest speaker for this session, Dr. Sairam Bhatt, Professor of Law and Coordinator at CIRA. Thank you, sir, for sharing your wisdomous knowledge with us. Your lecture was indeed very savage and <laughs> unforgettable for sure. It was joyous to listen to your satiristic remarks. Now, I would like to thank our respected dean uh, of law, Professor Dr. Tia Subramanya and respected director Dr. Vijay Praneshwaran, who is not here with us, for being extremely supportive to us in, when we needed them. Further, I would like to thank our beloved faculty coordinator, Professor Gayatri NM, for guiding us in our endeavors. <laughs> and also Gayatri ma'am of NNS. <laughs> all right, lastly, thank you all for being such a lovely audience. Have a great day.